Uh, we believe that uh, Israel's emergence is the greatest collective event in the history of the Jewish people. On the eve of the 1967 war, the Middle East was a different place. Monday marks the 50th anniversary of the beginning of the June 1967 Six-Day War. Israel's lightning speed victory over its Arab neighbors in June of 1967 stunned the world. Israel's quick victory in that war was largely the result of the Air Force's stunning success in destroying air power of Egypt, Syria and Jordan. At that time in 1967, when, you're, when you have enemies coming from all sides, expanding your territory is important. It's considered one of the most successful air campaigns in the history of warfare. The air operation that changed the Middle East. Arab propaganda has a major impact outside the region. For many around the world, it raises concerns that the state of Israel may be destroyed. You turn on the TV and watch Egyptian programs. You see NASA at an airbase in Sinai with MiG-21 pilots. Waiting in the wings were Iraq and Saudi Arabia. Israel was virtually surrounded. Eshkol's military advisor, Colonel Lior, is awakened at 2.30 a.m. with the news that the straits have been closed. I sat in bed, the blood pulsing in my temples. I knew that there was no going back now. Israel was at war. That's it, writes Lior. The decision cannot be undone. Israel of uh, 2017 is not the Israel of 1967. Uh, in case no one noticed, Israel of 2017 is a regional superpower. It has the most powerful army in the region and one of the most powerful armies in the world. We have to realize that it's, it is not 1967, it's not 1947, it is not 1917. It's 2017. Israel is, a, is, a, is an economic superpower. It's a diplomatic superpower. It's a military superpower. In 1867, Mark Twain toured the land of Israel. Was Mark Twain the first blogger? I've said that. I mean, I've, I've, I would say that that is exactly right. One of the greatest writers in American history. Okay, in the late 1800s, you know, a celebrity, there, there's, no, there's no social media, there's no TV, there's no telephones. A celebrity is kind of a different thing. There weren't as many of them. You know, but Mark Twain was a celebrity. The man famous worldwide for his white suit, 
his best-selling novels, and his rip-roaring lectures, the first global superstar. Was an American celebrity, visited Israel, the land, in the late 1800s, was quoted as saying, this is the most desolate place I've ever seen in my life. I don't see how anything could ever grow here. Ezekiel 36, 34, and 35, these are all over, and desolate land shall be tilled. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by, i.e. Mark Twain. Sent shockwaves through Europe. Some five to six hundred thousand French Jews, but over the last ten years they have been uh, leaving or hedging for their own security and moving assets and indeed their families very often to Israel, which has seen a surge uh, in Jewish immigration. When Israel was founded in 1948, efforts began to bring over Ethiopian Jews. Jewish immigration from France to Israel was greater than any other country. He predicts a 400% increase next year in the number of Jews coming to Israel from Ukraine. The Jewish population in Israel has the highest rate of growth of any developed country in the world. It's just a coincidence that there's over a hundred scriptures on them returning. And we're watching it today. A new report from Pew Research shows the number of Jews living in Europe has been on a decline for decades. Well, I think the history of immigration to Israel suggests that it's both a land of hope and it's also refuge. verses on this you guys on how he's gonna bring them back he's gonna scatter them and he's gonna bring them back well that's happened there's a prevailing thought that says that it's hard to establish agriculture in the desert but that's not necessarily so as our Israeli correspondent discovers that's because Israel today has more water than it needs it's gone from drought to water surplus in just a few years impressive anywhere but especially in the arid Middle East one of the driest regions in the world there are three and a half thousand hectares of desert being farmed in the Arava Valley. Today, Mark Twain wouldn't even recognize this land. Out of rocky soil, out of swamps, and even out of deserts, Israelis have created gardens, vineyards, and farms. But now, a hundred and something years later, Israel's so blessed and fertile, the land is so fruitful, they produce 90% of the flowers and fruit for Europe in the middle of the desert. All of this was accomplished in the first 20 years of Israel's statehood. In that time, they more than doubled their standard of living. When you're choosing a wine for dinner, what comes to mind? French, Italian, maybe Australian, Californian, Chilean, but Israeli? Okay, everybody, take one, okay? It was the butt of jokes on friends. Ooh, Israeli champagne. <laughs> and it's vanilla. <laughs> I got tenure, I didn't win the lottery. But here in Israel, wines are actually enjoying a renaissance. Additionally, it seems that reviewers and magazines have recently chosen to focus on Israel as one of the most promising emerging wine regions. plant vineyards, drink the wine thereof. You know, you, you guys, you, the old timers here, oh yeah, scattered, yeah, they were scattered, they're being brought back. This is a big deal. Israel is already easily the world leader in water reuse, far outpacing the rest of the world. Israel's the only place on the planet where the desert is actually shrinking. 
That's particularly impressive amid warmer conditions. But God talks about how he's going to make that land rich and productive. It all begins in the 1990s. Back then, everyone agrees. Israel is the only country in the Middle East without oil. Only recently, Israel imported its energy from around the world. For the energy minister, the course is clear. Thanks to gas, the country will not only soon be energy independent. Israel's newfound energy resources have been described as a dream. Now, when you think of a country with technological innovations, Israel may not immediately come to mind. Israel is one of the biggest tech startup scenes in the world, big enough, in fact, to have earned the nickname Startup Nation. The stakes are high because there are also reports of huge oil deposits near the very same gas fields. Some call these new discoveries an economic miracle. But an even bigger natural gas field called Leviathan could make Israel what it never was before. This is a revolution that is happening worldwide that we are living in the middle of. We are all in the middle of this energy revolution. In recent years, though, natural gas reserves have become the cause of conflict in the unstable region. 56 miles off Israel's Mediterranean coast, the Tamar Reservoir, another field nearby, almost twice as big. And there's another aspect to this story. How will Israel's gas find affect the always volatile politics of the region? These are not countries that are famous for resolving their uh, disputes uh, by peaceful means. But whatever happens, gas and oil will make Israel a wealthier country, less reliant on others. And that's no joking matter. This is one of the richest sites in the world for uh, bird watching. Bird watches come from all over to see the phenomenon. I don't think you could find a better place to come to see the um, variety of species, as well as the, the atmosphere and the beauty of the place. It's just unrivaled in any place in the world. The other major political and security issue swirling as we head into the holidays involves the Holy Land. Yeah, the Obama administration going out with a bang, delivering a shocking rebuke of Israel. The resolution, among other things, demands, and I quote, that Israel immediately and completely cease all settlement activities in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. The United States could have killed this resolution by voting no. I really think this was an effort to box the incoming uh, Trump administration in, and it violates uh, nearly 50 years of American bipartisan policy on the Middle East, going back to the iconic resolution 242 uh, after the 1967 war, which established the principle of land for peace. This resolution says basically Israel's occupation is illegitimate, therefore it has no land to give back in exchange for peace. Uh, the consequences of this resolution are going to be uh, felt uh, for many, many years. President Obama and Secretary Kerry are behind what was termed this shameful vote at the United Nations. 
Elizabeth. Wow, breaking news. David Lee Miller reporting live. Dave, thank you so much. We appreciate it. As the de facto authority of the new state of Israel. So they stepped through a window of history which suddenly opened briefly uh, into nationhood. And it is one of the miracles uh, of history that this happened. So we, we have these signs, and it's not just in Israel alone.